Let's take a look at another way to begin a route besides drag and drop. This time we'll use the option called Start at Point. This option is used when you want to start a route using a component that doesn't have a C point. In this example, I just want my route to begin in the hole on the pump cover and have it end on a flange that already has a C point. Again, for this example, we will be using a tubing route, so I'll select Tubing on the routing toolbar, and the tubing tools become available. This time, instead of drag and drop, I'll select the Start at Point icon. When I do, the Connection Point Property Manager appears. This C point, like any other C point, will control the type of route and the properties of the overall route, such as the nominal tube diameter. The trick here is that since I'm planning on connecting my route to an existing C point on the flange, I need to make sure to use the same properties that are in the other C point. In order for two C points to connect to each other in the same route, they must have the same properties, such as their diameter. To get started, I'll first select the top face and then the sketch point that's located on the center of the hole. This will position my C point. I also need to specify the C point direction. If the arrow is facing in the wrong direction, you can always use the reverse direction checkbox to flip it. I'll choose tube as the type. I'll type in a nominal diameter. and a stub length that will determine the length of the sketch line that will stick out of our C-point once it's created. I'll accept the other default settings for now and click OK. When I do, this brings me to the Route Property Manager where I can specify the properties of the route. If you remember, this Property Manager is where we began when we used the drag and drop method of creating a route. Since the component had been dragged in from the design library in the previous lesson, it already had a C-point so we were able to skip the C-point settings we just completed a moment ago. These route property selections in this window are based on the settings we just specified for our C-point. Since we defined tubing as the route type in our C-point, we only have tubing choices here for the rest of our route. We also typed in a nominal diameter for our tube, narrowing down the choices for the base configuration tube sizes here in the drop-down menu. There are several settings and options below for tubing, but we'll go over them a little later in the tubing section. For now, I just want you to be comfortable with the idea that the properties of a C-point are what control the type of route and its size. And the route properties that we see here are what control the behavior between the beginning and end of the route. Confused? Don't worry. This will become much clearer in the upcoming lessons. When I click OK, the route will be started and I can continue with the 3D sketch. As I mentioned before, I could just exit the sketch and it would end the route right where the 3D sketch is. But in this case, I want the route to end exactly on the flange component. To do that, I can right click on its C point and select Add to Route. When I do, its stub length is added and I can easily use that sketch segment to connect the rest of my 3D sketch. I want to reiterate here that the reason I was able to complete the route with this flange is because the properties for the C point in the flange match the properties from the C-point created to start this route. If the ending flange C-point did not match the beginning C-point's properties, SolidWorks would have given me an error when trying to connect the two sketch segments. Once everything's connected, I'll exit the sketch. To get back to the main assembly, I'll click the Edit Component icon. Before we move on, I'd like to point out the sub-assembly that was created in the feature tree. By starting a route on the fly, it created a sub-assembly that only contains the tube part file and the C point we used to begin the route. This is a bit different than what happened when we created a route by drag and drop. In the drag and drop example, it added the flange components to the route subassembly rather than leaving them in the main assembly as it is here, which is something you should keep in mind as you begin creating your own routes.